All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another Star Wars Outlaws video. And today we have something very special for you. I was actually lucky enough to get my hands on an entire hour of unseen gameplay footage and B-roll of Star Wars Outlaws to share with you guys. And we're gonna go through it together today, leading into the release of the game next month. So a big thank you to Ubisoft for providing this footage to me, and let's jump into it. Now, I can't show you the entire hour in full, but I can show you the highlights from that hour as we walk through what seems to be one of the earlier missions in the game. Now, before we get started, make sure you guys are subscribed because I will have a ton of Star Wars Outlaws videos coming here on the channel very, very soon. And while you guys are down there, let me know in the comments section below if you're excited to get your hands on the game next month. Now, I want to make sure you guys watch to the end of the video because there is something really, really cool at the end, but we're going to go through this mission first and then I'll show you what I've got for you at the end after. Anyways, getting back to the gameplay, this mission takes place on Toshara and it begins as we see Kay waking up on the floor of her ship after seemingly being knocked out. Now, from what I can tell from this gameplay, and it doesn't give us all the information, I feel like this isn't actually Kay's ship and she has somehow acquired it and taken it and crash landed here on Tashara. So I think after crash landing here, she needs to figure out a way to repair the ship and we meet a brand new character as we exit the ship. But it seemed like she had been knocked out when she landed. So she wakes up, she meets Waka, and then we have to help save him from some bandits. And it's at this point where he agrees to help Kay repair the ship. Now, obviously, this doesn't come with any sort of foreshadowing or anything like that. We meet him as soon as she walks out of the ship. So it's very quickly that this all happens. Kay is told to go and head into Miragana City to find the parts that are needed to fix the ship. But she's quickly cut off on her way there by more bandits and is chased until she reaches the city, showing the pike presence is enough to scare off these bandits. Because you do actually verbally hear the bandits say, that's Pike territory, let's turn back. So I think it just shows the actual power and presence that the Pikes have in this situation. During the chase with the bandits though, we do get to see Kay showcase that kind of dead eye ability that we've seen in a few of the gameplay sequences before. This looks like it's gonna be something that maybe we can upgrade. If you look in the bottom right corner, you can kind of see how it's charged up and how many shots can be fired. I'm thinking this is probably something we can upgrade to fire off more shots as we go along, but. That's just kind of what I'm getting from reading the gameplay here. Now, once we reach Miragana City, we need to find the Cantina, but something that stood out to me at this point is just how good this underworld setting is looking. The developers really managed to capture, I guess, the feeling of being part of the underworld through like the map design and the visual effects used on this space. And while I have seen people critiquing how the game looks online, this to me looks really, really good. And if it's an indicator of what's to come in the future, I can't wait to get my hands on the full version of the game. But other than that, once we make it to the cantina, we do a little bit of lock picking and we find our way to Gorak. And he is the syndicate leader for the Pikes on Miragana. And after asking him for some work, he pretty much just dismisses us and throws us out, telling us to come back when we're not new in this world. So he's basically saying, I don't know who you are. You're not going to work for me until you build a reputation for yourself. And so that's kind of what we have to do from here leading forward. Now, as we get thrown out the door, this leads to us meeting Danka, who seems to be our handler from here on out, uh, pointing us in the right direction for jobs and the parts we need and kind of just guiding us on this journey a little bit more and more so of the storyline plot and less so of the side missions. So at this point, we're introduced to something a lot of people that are actually curious about, which is the criminal network and kind of how it works. This screen shows that Kay's got certain relationships with each of the syndicates on the menu. And we also get a glimpse of like the reputation screen as well as some of the cosmetic rewards that you can receive for building reputation with each of the syndicates. So in this screen, you can kind of go in, see what unlockables each syndicate is going to be able to give you. Most of it looks like it's cosmetic for the most part, but if there's something that you're going to fancy over the other, then that's kind of guide you through your story play and what you're going to choose to do when you do get these sort of sequences where you have to choose one syndicate or the other. Uh, the next sequence after this is more of like a stealth mission. So think kind of uncharted style sneak and disable gameplay to basically go through and disable an energy barrier and steal from information that's locked behind those doors. 
This shows a few ways that you can use the environment to your advantage, as well as some of the tricks that Nyx can do to help you along the way. And I think it's just going to be a really interesting dynamic to see just how much of this we're going to use throughout the game, because obviously in all the gameplay we've gotten so far, we kind of see Nyx used quite frequently. And I'm just wondering how much of that is actually necessary, or if we can kind of get through on doing it with just Kay alone. Now, once Kay has recovered the intel that she needed, an alarm is raised, of course, and we have to escape the building, taking out a few of the enemies along the way. And one thing I noticed during this segment is like some of the blasters that are laying around the map that you can actually pick up, including things like an A280 and a sniper rifle as well. So it seems like these better weapons, or I guess like weapons that Kay isn't able to have off the rip, she can find them in the layers of the syndicates or got like their bases and kind of use them to her advantage. So I'm curious to see how good these weapons are and just how much we actually need to use them because it would be one thing to go through the entire game and just use her blaster pistol, which could get a little bit tedious and mind numbing and just being the same thing over and over again. It would be nice to have to use some of these weapons to actually escape certain situations as well. But it seems like everything we've seen so far, she can just use her blaster pistol and doesn't really have a diverse feeling of gameplay to it. So that's just a thought I had while watching this sequence. But after that, we pretty much just return back to the cantina. Now, once we return to the cantina, we do have a choice. Snitch on the Pike Trader that we found out this information on, or save the information for Gorak. And depending on what you choose, I'm assuming is going to build your reputation with the Pikes, but we opt to save it for Gorak in this situation. Now, after completing this mission for Danka, we received the first part we needed for the ship, and then we need to find some ion attachments to upgrade our blaster pistol, but these can't just be purchased from the shop as we initially thought. No, it has to be stolen from either the Pikes or Crimson Dawn. Now, if you know anything about the syndicates in Star Wars, you can't just walk into their territory as a nobody and expect to be let in, which is exactly what happens to Kay in this instance. She tries to walk into the Crimson Dawn location and is turned away immediately, and this was when we have to find another way in. Now, after sneaking into the Crimson Dawn base and laying waste to a few of their thugs, we find what we need as well as a vault key that is needed later on. Upon returning to the ship, it's ready to fly, and before we set off, we get our first look at some of the blaster upgrading that's available, unlocking our first upgrade in the Ion Blaster Burst configuration. The Ion Burst configuration is set in the description to be strong against shields and droids, allowing us to kind of switch up the gameplay better to suit the enemies that we're facing. Now, this is kind of where I'm going to leave the video, but before I do leave you guys, I have one more thing to show you that I was talking about at the start of this video. Now, I will be posting some more missions from this gameplay in the coming week, but I wanted to show you one more thing before we go. Ubisoft was kind enough to provide us with gameplay footage of how we can play Sabacc in Star Wars Outlaws, so check it out and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. New card. Eniki Nanolia. I draw. G Otto Nanolia. G 
Anyaba. Pass. Leoto Nenolia. Oh. That's Sabak. Sabak. Oh, no bata. That one's mine. at you. Come on, Nix, be nice. 